Beyond Our Galaxy. On today's show, we're going to be talking about modern day astronomy and astronomers. We are going to be talking briefly about the following modern day cultures and astronomy Europe, United States, and other countries. Hey, Gal, are you here today? Yeah, Nick, I'm still here, even though I'm getting old and my bones ache all over, too. Well, that is very understanding, Gal, considering how old we are. I'm exactly 450 years old to be exact, Nick. Wow, Gal, sorry to hear you feel so terrible. Forget it, Nick. Age comes with the territory. Besides, what did you want to tell me today? What do you think about the modern day astronomy stuff? My brain aches now when I think, Nick. But I think modern astronomy is very cool. But just think, Al, you and I started modern day astronomy. True, maybe, but all I got was under house arrest and you just died. Hey, Mr. Producer, quick, continue with the show before Gal has a nervous breakdown. And the journey. Indeed, one could say that Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus is the father of modern-day astronomy. Copernicus lived in the 17th century. Just before he died, he had his book published titled On the Revolutions of the Heavens. He proved with his book the sun and not the earth was the center of the solar system. Then, in about another 100 years, another man came along to tell the same story. Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei, 1564 to 1692. Galileo is considered to be the father of observational astronomy. With the perfection of his telescope, Galileo was able to prove Copernicus's theory correct. He proved this by observing the four larger moons of Jupiter orbiting the big gas giant planet. Thus we have the beginning of modern astronomy beginning from Nicholas Copernicus in 1543 to the present day technology. Modern day astronomy has grown by leaps and bounds since Copernicus's discovery of truth arrived. Modern day twos have quickly advanced the knowledge we have about our big universe we live in today. The next few pictures show some of the modern day astronomical twos that help advance our universe knowledge.
The definition of modern astronomy is this. The study of the following things found above the Earth's atmosphere. The sun, moon, stars, and the galaxies, planets, and comets, as well as other objects discovered by telescope. And the definition of modern astronomy includes this as well. The elements of motion and characteristics of these bodies. We will now briefly talk about modern day astronomers and today's modern culture beginning with Europe. Modern day astronomy began here in Poland as seen on this map with the red arrow pointing to it. It began from 1473 to 1543 and a house seen in the next picture. 15 Kopernika Street, Torun, Poland. I think it would be so cool to visit the homes where our modern day astronomers lived and worked. Polish astronomer Nicholas Kopernikus, father of modern astronomy, developed a heliocentric model of our solar system. Copernicus's discovery of the truth expanded the search of what our universe is really like way, way, way out there in space. Our second European astronomer we continue to talk about with our modern day astronomer era is Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei. This astronomer lived in Florence, Italy Seen on a map in the next picture. Galileo Galilei lived in Florence, Italy, where the red arrow points to the place on the map of this location. In 1610, Galileo perfected his telescope and observed the planet Jupiter with it. Galileo had proved that Nicodemus Copernicus' theory of a sun centered solar system was correct. Old Gal had a run-in with the Catholic Church and still couldn't accept this theory at all as, as yet. And the Catholic Church had placed Old Gal under house arrest for the rest of his life. This is what Galileo Galilei's house looks like. Even though Gal had been placed under house arrest, he becomes known as the father of observational astronomy. Our third and last European astronomer we now will briefly talk about is in the next picture. William Herschel, 1738 to 1822, British astronomer. Herschel becomes the first modern day astronomer to discover another planet called the planet Uranus. This planet becomes the seventh planet in our solar system and more discoveries are made throughout the universe with the perfected telescope. Herschel works closely with his sister Caroline, who helps her brother to catalog many objects observed in the universe. Astronomer Herschel lived in the city called Slough, England, west of London. The location of Slough, England can be seen in red on this map. Here's a picture of astronomer Herschel's home in Slough, England. This is where William worked alongside with his sister Caroline Herschel to observe hundreds of objects in the night sky. Here is a picture of British astronomer William Herschel's 40-foot telescope he built. Here we can see in this picture William and Caroline working together as brother and sister cataloging some 400 objects in the night sky. There were other modern day astronomers who helped move astronomy into a science that both amateur and professional study of the night sky. British scientist Sir Isaac Newton discovers the laws of gravity in 1607. German astronomer Johannes Kepler develops the laws of planetary motions in 1609. Before we are going to talk briefly about three modern day astronomers in the United States, we are going to show some more awesome pictures of space. So, 
Get yourself another warm cup of coffee and sit right back down in the easy chair, relax, and enjoy the next few space pictures. We are now going to briefly talk about three modern-day astronomers who lived in the United States. John Winthrop, Clyde Tumball, Gerard Kuiper. John Winthrop, 1714 to 1779. This is the first known to be American astronomer in the United States. He is Harvard's University President for one year in 1769. Professor of Mathematics and Natural Philosophy. Renthrop observes the transits of Mercury and Venus as well. Renthrop Winthrop observes the transit of Mercury after he makes a trip to Newfoundland to see it. Here is a picture of Mercury's transit in front of the sun seen as a black dot moving across the sun. Astronomer Winthrop observes the transit of Venus as well, seen as a black dot moving across the top part of the sun here in this picture. Astronomer Winthrop writes a book about this experience as seen here in this picture. Our second American modern day astronomer is Guy Tumball, 1906 to 1997. From the low observatory located at Flagstaff, Arizona, Tumball discovers what was once a planet called Pluto, but in 2006 was demoted to being a dwarf planet instead. By using photographic plates each night, he observes this moving object and determines it to be a planet orbiting the sun. This is a picture of what planet Pluto looks like on one side and Tom Ball posing for a picture next to his telescope. Below is a quote from astronomer Clyde Tumball that says this, I have seen three objects in the last seven years which defied any explanation of known Phenomenon. Our third and final U.S. modern day astronomer is astronomer Gerard Kuiper, 1905 to 1973. He is considered to be the father of planetary science. He was a professor at the University of Chicago. He is most famous for discovering the part of the solar system known as the Kuiper Belt. Pluto is considered to be a part of the Kuiper Belt where many, many objects are found there as well. Here is a picture of the location of the Kuiper Belt in our solar system. The Kuiper Belt is located about three 
trillion six hundred seventy million sixty thousand miles away from the sun. We are going to br briefly now talk about these modern day astronomers from other countries. Japanese astronomer Yuri Hayakataki. 1950 to 2002. This modern-day astronomer used a 50 by 100 pair of binoculars to discover an important object in the night sky. He makes this important discovery on January 31st, 1996, seen in the next picture. Comet Hayakataki. Our second modern-day astronomer from other countries is William Parsons, 3rd Earl of Rosé, 1800-1867, an Anglo-Saxon astronomer. He builds a large telescope that can be seen in the next picture and discovers many things out in the universe with it. Astronomer Parsons built the 72-inch telescope in 1845 and discovers the object seen in the next picture. M51 Nebula. A nebula is a cloud as seen in this picture. At first, a nebula was a hot, debated subject in astronomy as to what it really was. But now, astronomer Parsons defines a nebula as nothing but dust and clouds. Our third and final modern-day astronomer can be found in the next picture. Swiss astronomer Paul Wilde, 1925-2014, to filled a study, astronomy. Astronomer Wilde had studied many objects in the night sky. From behind this telescope, astronomer Wilde discovers many comets, asteroids, and supernovas. Astronomer Wilde discovers the comet in the night sky and calls it Wild Comet 2. Well, here are some more awesome pictures of space for you to enjoy viewing, so get yourself a refill of a warm cup of coffee, sit back in your easy chair, relax, and enjoy the picture. for today's show. Hey, wait a minute, Mr. Producer. What about Ptolemy? Here, here, Mr. Producer. Aren't you going to rescue old Ptolemy? Oh, wow, guys. 
Did you have to interrupt my show now? So, Mr. Producer, you're not going to leave us hanging, are you? Hey, now, that's not a bad idea. Keep the viewers watching till the last show's over. Hey, Mr. Producer, that's not nice the way you're training old Ptolemy. Oh, sorry, Nikki, but I'm the producer, remember? Hey, bud, my name is Nick, not Nikki. Got it? Oh, okay, Nick. But viewers won't know until towards the end of one of these final series. Hey, Nick, come here and see what I see through my telescope. What do you see, gal? Another undiscovered planet? No, no, I see a huge thing like a ship sailing through space without sails. Gal, you're seeing things. You've been staring through your telescope for too long. No, he's not seeing things, Nick. We decided to help rescue old Ptolemy from the board, whoever they are. Wow, gal, I wish I had a telescope to use like yours. Wow, man. Nick, Nick, I see another ship without sails again. Voyager, Voyager to, the, to the, rescue. the rescue. This is Captain Janeway from the Starship Voyager. I'm afraid old gal isn't seeing things, Nicky. Man, my name is Nick. Not Nikki, but it's good the troops are coming. Wow, Nick, I think this is going to be so cool watching the last rescue of Ptolemy. And the journey continues. What will you find in the night sky when you turn your telescope towards the sky and look beyond our... Galaxy. Galaxy.